In our discussion, let's take this background report put together by Ekene Ndului. Political party is considered as one of the fundamentals of democratic governance, which has been adjudged as the best form of government that allows equal opportunities for participation and representation all over the world. These political parties serve as platforms for recruitment of political leaders and the organization of parliament and government, both in advanced and developing democracies. Since the First Republic, Nigeria has had multiple political parties, except during the Third Republic, when there were only two, namely NRC and SDP. The number has been fluctuating over the years, but currently stands at 18. Out of this number, the most dominant have remained the All Progressives Congress, APC, People's Democratic Party, PDP, and All Progressives Grand Alliance, APGA, judging from the number of elections they have won. However, the crisis rocking these political parties in the country and their inability to ensure internal democracy has continued to be a source of concern, especially for their supporters and indeed the entire citizenry. The build-up to the Edo gubernatorial election in 2020 was riddled with party wranglings within the APC, which culminated to the removal of the then national chairman. The People's Democratic Party is currently embroiled with Lego tussles on the removal of the national chairman of the party. While the All Progressives Grand Alliance is also facing several litigations at the leadership level with multiple factional chairmen springing up. Some civil society organizations have consistently warned that this will negatively affect people's choices in the forthcoming elections. On that premise, there have been calls for political party reforms that would entrench transparency, accountability and internal democracy. How can political parties in Nigeria be better managed to advance Nigeria's democracy? Guests on Good Morning Nigeria shall be given their perspectives in a moment. for that uh, backgrounder. We have guests with us here in the studios. Uh, two of them, of course, are regular guests. Another guest will be joining us uh, from our Battle Network Center. First in the studios here, I would like to welcome uh, Professor Osari Mel Usumbo, Professor of Law, former Governor of Edo State and two-time Senator of the Federal Republic. Uh, Professor Usumbo, delighted to have you again on Good Morning Nigeria. It's my pleasure. Good morning. Okay. Also here with us in the studios, we'd like to welcome Honorable Ogene Ima Ego. He's a member of the House of Representatives, uh, representing a more world of federal constituency on the platform of the People's Democratic Party. Now, he was, during the uh, stillborn Third Republic, uh, he was the publicity secretary in Lagos State for the National Republican Convention, and that was between 1990 and 92. Uh, of course, he's uh, had uh, other political party uh, leadership positions. Honorable Ego, delighted to have you this morning. Thank you. I'm honored to be here. Thank you. And also in the studio, we are being joined by Ezen Wawaku, Chairman Partners for Electoral Reform. It's a pleasure to have you join us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. And also joining us from Ibadan studio is Professor Emmanuel Remy Aide. Polit Professor of Political Institutions, Governance and Public Policy, Department of Political Science, University of Ibado. Glad to have you join us on Good Morning Nigeria. Good morning. It's a good pleasure to be here this morning. Okay. All right. Uh, gentlemen, uh, once again, I'd like uh, to have you all uh, with us uh, for today's conversation. Part of what we can uh, note particularly with uh, the Fourth Republic since uh, 1999 and of course shortly before then when the parties were formed in, in 1998 is the high turnover for instance in the leadership of the political parties whether uh, uh, you know legacy parties or whether newer parties 
as they are today. And, and uh, an unsavory development is that in a number of, of cases, particularly in the leading political parties, the party chairman, national chairman, and sometimes also at the state level, they have often left office uh, in unpleasant circumstances, usually either shoot out or disgraced out. And this one comes with a great deal of tension and crisis. Uh, spilling over into the national space uh, and of course uh, uh, creating concerns for all stakeholders. Beginning with Professor uh, Osereme Osumbo, why have we had this whole crisis of uh, leadership uh, wrangling and uh, as I said conflicts uh, in political parties in the fourth republic? Uh, well that's a, a difficult one but let me say that um, First of all, political parties are voluntary associations, voluntary organizations, as the Supreme Court said recently. Um, and therefore, the members of the political, uh, political parties as associations have the freedom to choose their leaders. Uh, including the, lead, the leadership, the chairman of the parties, as uh, you've specifically mentioned. Perhaps the reason, well, first of all, the high turnover rate is not just with political parties. Perhaps the wider Nigerian space, if you look at it, you will find that uh, there's a high turnover, uh, even with people occupying elective legislative positions, for instance. There's a very high turnover, which doesn't do any good to the maturing of our democracy and the deepening of our democracy. But with reference to political parties, I, I would say that uh, what we see as this very high turnover rate and instability in the leadership might be because of the high stakes involved. There's, there's a lot of high stakes involved. You will know that uh, there are, uh, as I said, voluntary associations like associations, clubs, social clubs, social associations. There are also associations, only that most of them are re uh, registered under the Companies and Allied Matters Act as clubs or associations. But there's less instability in those associations compared to political parties, which are also associations, although registered uh, in accordance with the provisions of the Constitution by INEC, instead of CAMA, uh, the uh, CAC, Com uh, Corporate Affairs Commission, in the case of other clubs and associations. So as I said, the reason might be one that there is a tendency for people to jostle for positions in political parties because of the benefit, quote and unquote, that are offered as against like voluntary clubs or associations where the benefits may not be as pronounced as you would experience in political parties. That is one. Secondly, I think that with the maturing of our democracy and the entire process, improvements in our economy uh, and even the recruitment of the leadership of political parties we will begin to see uh, uh, a change in the uh, kind of behavior that you have described. Uh, how do we bring about this change? It's a matter I'm sure that we can discuss further. How do you bring about this change to ensure that the leadership recruitment process is improved in order that those who emerge as chairmen or officers of political parties can enjoy an enduring trust from their membership? It's, 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 it's work in progress, I would say. Indeed, it is work in progress. Honorable Ogene Ima Ogo. Um, this is the longest running democratic governance since Nigeria became independent, almost 22 years now. And the wranglings, the rumblings, the cross carpeting, the mismanagement of political parties is glaring us in the face. Why are we not getting it right? Okay, well. And where are we doing, what are we doing wrong here? 
Okay, uh, let me say one of the reasons why you have this instability, uh, in addition to what Prof said, is because of the presidential system of government that we are running. You know, in the presidential system of government, the party bedwives the candidates. Once the candidates come out, they win election, they become bigger than those who put them there. It's like the president of the country is bigger than the chairman of the party. The governor of the state is bigger than the chairman of the party of the state. But it is the party of the chairman of the party of the state that was the head of the party that brought the governor and brought the president. So it's because of the presidential system. And there's always thousands for power. Once people are elected, they try to be bigger than the party. But I think the party should be supreme. But if it's, if it's parliamentary system of government, the party that brings the person out, you know, will take charge. Because it is the party that is going for the election. Having won the election, the party will now nominate people to the various positions. But presidential system, the party brings somebody out, the person becomes number one, is the one everybody is seeing that is campaigning. All authorities belong to him when he wins, and everybody goes to him for favors and everything. And before you know, maybe the chairman of the party did not support him well while he was running for primaries. Or he would believe that the chairman had not took too much money, or he didn't do what he rightly. So he takes his part of flesh. But in the parliamentary system of government, the chairman of the party probably will become the president or the prime minister of the country. And the state will become the governor. And all the candidates were active people who led the party to victory, the take position. So there's more stability in, in, in a parliamentary system of government. Now, in Nigeria, we are still growing. We take it presidential system of government, but we, we are not as developed as America. You know, in America, people work for you and you win. After that, they walk away. They are happy that the candidate have won who believe in their principle. But in Nigeria, the man who works for you as a party chairman or in various local government, they, 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 they need to be paid because everybody's hungry. You know, income level is very low. So as a result, they now will be on the neck of the candidate who won to seek uh, assistance, which of course is not bad. But because of that, it becomes subservient to the person who is in charge. And that is why you see that governors can just stand up and say, well, we need to remove this chairman and that kind of thing. So it's the system itself, you know. Maybe if we are doing a parliamentary system of government, which would have been better, you know, for a developed country like this, there will be stability. <coughs> but as it is, this instability will continue so long as the candidate who comes out, after winning, it becomes bigger than the party, Everybody looks toward him to form the party and to also take care of the party people. So it will continue. But as we develop more, as income level become better, people will now be, know that they can feed themselves. It's not the party that you've won the election, go and do your busy. Let me look at my business. Okay. But until then, it will continue to happen. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Ogene Ego, for uh, your, your input. Uh, I'm sure we will have the opportunity of returning to uh, one, one of the key points that you have just raised now, uh, seeking to uh, identify the presidential system as one of the causative factors for the instability we have seen in the leadership of political parties at the national and subnational level. I hope, uh, we, as I said, we have the opportunity of interrogating it because some persons will refer you to what happened in the Second Republic, uh, which was a presidential system of government. Unfortunately, that republic didn't last long enough, uh, such as we are seeing now in the Fourth Republic, to know whether the kind of behavior, uh, which isn't what we are seeing now, uh, might have endured under a presidential system rather than a parliamentary system. Once again, Honorable Ego, uh, thanks a lot. We'll return to you. Uh, SN1, one, one,
Ago, of course, one of our regulars uh, on, on Good Morning Nigeria. This is a subject matter we have touched on from time to time. That's to say the management uh, of, of, of political parties, but we are also seeing the intense conflict in the leadership of, of the political parties, which, of course, uh, impacts on uh, the overall governance of the various uh, political parties, uh, big or small. But in this case, as we have seen in recent weeks, the big parties. What are your thoughts? Well, thank you. Uh, you, you took it off, off me when you, talk, when you went back to the Second Republic. We didn't, just, um, we didn't just invent the presidential system. We, we've had it and uh, we, we saw political parties and we saw the relationship between the political parties and uh, the government and uh, the government that they birthed, they, they, they gave back to. Um, it, it, there is more in terms of uh, uh, our ability to situate what um, the transition from military rule did to our political institutions in, in that the command nature of those who, uh, who eventually uh, took over uh, governance in 1999 brought to bear that attitude in the way they, they related with the different institutions. And I think we, we must talk about the ownership of political parties, um, the stakeholder nature of political parties, and how that impacts on the kind of attitude uh, that we have seen over a period of time. There is no, uh, immediately we started having uh, that executive um, ambush of the political party structures if you if you permit my use of that word uh, we began to see a situation in which the the government hijacked the political parties and then decided who got what uh it, it, we knew that it, it got to a point where we started uh this word we gave him the ticket not that he contested uh, he didn't. The, 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 when you take away contestation, and it became that we gave him uh, the governors were given the the, the 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 tickets, not the parties anymore. Uh, in that sense, so the question of ownership, the question of stakeholdership, is germane in understanding the crisis that has continued to bedevil the political parties, where extraneous influences continue to dominate activities within what could be internal uh, internal party governance uh, that 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 has been taken away from the political parties and those who administer those political parties they take instructions from outside of the political parties uh, whether even before they get into government there are people who are not in government who don't play any role in government who sit in their houses and determine who gets what uh, even till now. So the, for me, um, just to preface my conversation would be, we cannot divorce the crisis that we, we face currently from the issue of ownership, from the issue of stakeholdership of the political parties. Secondly, the issue of differentness uh, that political parties are known for. We, we should be able to say this party is different from this. But the challenge is that the crisis uh, that that is in one party is in another one because the the governing ideology right now is that whether it is in this party or the others there are people who think they own the party and uh, what they say will will happen and when what they are saying is not happening they 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 create that crisis and they find the different ways to ensure that what they want is eventually what uh, happens within that political party so let's for for my preface is about ownership is about stakeholdership and that is the beginning and end it of the crisis that we see in the political parties indeed it's about ownership and stakeholdership and um you talked about the ambush of political parties by you know people will call godfathers in politics sitting in their home and dictating what happens now let's go to Ibadan where professor Emmanuel is there. We've talked about stakeholders, ambush of political parties, presidential system, parliamentary system. Yes, we picked the presidential system for Nigeria. The question I want to ask you is, 
when we picked it, did we take everything that is entailed in the presidential system of government as it is practiced in other countries? Is the constitution of the party not bigger than the individual itself? We saw how it played out in the U.S. during the election between Biden and Trump. The party stood firm and most issues were dissolved, which is still standing. In Nigeria, do you think the individual is bigger than the constitution of the party? Well, I, I think the problem we have in Nigeria has a lot to do with the lack of institutionalization of the political parties. And the reason why this is so has been mentioned by uh, Izinwa, uh, identifying the very idea that um, party is supposed to aggregate interest and uh, you don't see uh, commitment to certain uh, ideas by members of political party. What you have, as someone described it, is special purpose vehicles. People just, because the constitution requires that you be nominated by a political party, uh, you just take a political party as an instrument for you to fulfill your purpose. Uh, and as he said, uh, if you look at uh, the beginning of the Fourth Republic, what you find is a situation where there is strong tension over the ownership of political parties. Uh, once the, uh, party members are in government, they want to dictate to the political parties, or you have very powerful gatekeepers, uh, people who think that they own the party and whatever they want should be done. Uh, in the height of it, when we thought that uh, there was going to be some kind of institutionalization, uh, where we want to differentiate the leadership of the political party from the political leadership in, of the government, you find a situation when Obasanjo was president, uh, he was leader of the party. When he was going to leave office, he wanted to make himself again the leader of the party, and it was resisted. And since then, uh, the uh, legacy that he has left in terms of those in government dictating to the party has remained. Uh, on the other hand, you also have those who are powerful forces within the political parties who are not in government but have sufficient resources you know, to uh, distribute patronage, also having a very strong hold on the political parties. Uh, I think that's, that's the cross of the matter. And it's, a, it's, it's not a, mesh, a question of the presidential system or the parliamentary system. I, I think what is really at stake is the uh, decision or attitude of those uh, who manage politics in Nigeria, politicians in general. I think they've not decided uh, to have parties who will be strongly established and institutionalized uh, to serve uh, the purpose of uh, strengthening our democracy. Rather, they continue to see the political parties as just instruments for gaining power. Uh, if uh, the constitution did not require them to be uh, uh, nominated by political parties, probably they would, they would do away with the political parties completely. I think it's important for us to redefine and understand what uh, we want political parties to be in Nigeria and let those politicians begin to uh, redesign political parties to fulfill those purposes. But for now, uh, political parties uh, cannot be consolidated because politicians just take them as vehicles uh, for winning elections. And uh, they think that if they have sufficient power or clout, they should dictate uh, to the political parties. Uh, in any case, if you look at, at uh, many of those political parties, uh, there are serious problems with them in terms of uh, how the party structures uh, 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 have evolved. Uh, we don't see parties that have membership, broadly speaking. What we have are political parties that are run by a few individuals. And once they are not satisfied with the way the political party is uh, carrying on, they either hijack the party or if they, they uh, face very strong opponents, they move into other parties where they have influences. And in many cases, they have their foot in multiple parties, trying to see if this doesn't work, they just move uh, to the other party. That's, that's the origin of the crisis that we are facing with these political parties today. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you very much, uh, Professor uh, Remy. We will we'll come back to you in the battle. Back to uh, our studios here. Let's we'll have the benefit of the practical uh, experiences of uh, both uh, Senator Osumbo uh, and Honorable uh, Ego here in, in the studios. But first, with uh, Professor Osumbo, 
Yes, the fact that political parties are voluntary uh, associations, the fact that political parties are uh, private entities uh, with uh, uh, significant public interface and therefore public duty. We also know that political parties uh, are not governed or supposed to be governed in a whimsical manner. Political parties have their own rules, that is to say they have their own constitution, they have their own resolutions. But why has it been apparently difficult for the parties, that is to say that the key players in the parties, to abide by the provisions of their own constitution? Well, um, why has it been difficult? Again, as I said before, uh, it is the attitude of the people. And even law, there, there is a view that human beings really would like to be free to do whatever they like, you know, freedom. People like freedom. But the only way you can keep to ensure that the freedom is not abused is by setting down rules and insisting and ensuring that those rules are complied with. Otherwise, people will want to do whatever they need to do uh, in order to get some advantage or benefit for themselves. It's, it's natural. But the constitution of the political parties, in fact the, constitu the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria ensures or insists in section 222 that before you can function as a political party, you must have a constitution which is registered with INEC and any subsequent alteration to that constitution must also be registered with INEC. So it is my view that the constitution of political parties are envisaged to be uh, of very high importance and must be complied with. That is why I find some certain remarks by uh, the Supreme Court in the very topical recent case that uh, courts are not concerned with internal affairs of political parties. Uh, that is not borne out by even previous judgments of the courts. They look into the internal affairs of political parties. What I'm driving at is that the only body that can insist that political parties conform and abide by their constitution are the courts. And the courts should not shy away from this. There can be abuses, can be abuses, of course, but the only way you can rein in on the excesses of human beings is through rules and insisting that those rules must be obeyed. Uh, so I see this as a very important way forward. Uh, the Honorable uh, Organe also mentioned economic benefit, economic empowerment. People are desperate for power because it's, like, it's almost like life and death matter for them, that once they lose out, then perhaps the future becomes bleak. So they go all out to ensure that they retain power or remove whoever is in power in order that they themselves can be there. So it's not just uh, something that is caused by maybe a president or a governor, I see this, as something which is endemic within the population. So whoever is there, whoever is there, unless the rules keep him in check, is likely to also do like, whether it's President or Basanjo or Governor, so and so, uh, there's a tendency in human beings to behave in that manner unless the laws keep them in check. And the constitution of political parties, if they are faithfully implemented, followed, and they guide the actions and activities of these officers, then we will not see or at least the incidents, incidences that you've referred to, that many of the contributor, uh, panelists have referred to, will be minimized. The way you can check human <coughs> conduct, as I always insist, is through rules. Uh, without rules, then life, human beings, will, life will be brutish, nasty, and short. It will be every man on his own, survival of the fittest. We have. So, 
in summary, I, I believe that the way that we can begin to engineer the behavior of Nigerian politicians is to ensure that the rules are laid down and the Constitution has so ensured, and then for the courts to insist that that Constitution which binds the members and the officers together are complied with. Nobody should feel superior to the rules which the association, which the members have set for themselves as the guiding rules for the political party. Honorable Ogene, does this apply to politics in Nigeria? Well, very difficult, very difficult. Uh, I think uh, Prof. Excellency uh, have said well, but you see, the difference in political parties in Nigeria and abroad is the fact that abroad, somebody comes up to say, I want to be president, I want to be governor, I want to go to rep or senate. And then people in the community come together and put their money. They donate money for the person to contest the election. So the person is going there for idea for purpose to, to, to go and use this idea to rule, to benefit everybody. Those who put down the money, they are not asking for any favor. They may be party people, you know, like some who brought Biden. A lot of people donated money. But those who are donating, once Biden have won, they are happy. They go back to their house. They believe the man will bring out policies that will rule the nation to their satisfaction. And that is all. But in Nigeria, somebody comes out and want to contest. Before you even come back, you have to look for money. Sometimes you sell a house, you sell a, some other properties to raise the money. So once you lose, maybe sometimes you would have lost all that you have. And then those who are donating money too, are donated, if it's a governor, they'll tell your excellency, I'm a contractor, I do road, I build houses, please, is the money I'll give it to you. I hope uh, the governor will have to promise. Because you the governor, always want payback. That is it. The governor is looking for money. You know? So that is the difference. Then, by the time you get to the office, if those who donated, you are not taking good care of them, it's a problem. And like I said earlier on, because we are talking about why there is here political instability. And one of the major reasons, like I said, is because in Nigeria, the man who is going to be president or governor or the position is not the party people who, who, who are in charge of the party. And that's why I said, for a developing country like Nigeria, if it was a parliamentary system, the governor, the, 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 the person who becomes governor is the leader of the party, is the one who is the chairman, who is doing the campaign. And it's the party that wins. When the party wins, then the party have won the election. Then the party will now nominate the candidate who will represent them in the various areas. But in a presidential candidate, the candidate runs himself, spends all the money, does everything. And because this is a poor country, it's still developing, there's no money. You know, people don't have source of income. Once somebody wins, everybody looking forward to him. Whether the man can take care of them or not from his resources, it doesn't matter to them. And so, corruption comes in. The man who have won will be struggling to look for money to take care of the people. So, I don't see an end to it very soon. Until the economy improves to understand that, you know, people now have good source of income. You know, a man who has worked for 35 years, he has resigned from, I mean, he has retired and wants to go into politics, you know, he knows that he has been paid enough pension or he will be earning enough pension to take care of himself. So if he's helping people to win or he's, he's, he's a chairman of a party in the world or local government, he knows that he has income. But right now it's not like that. You can imagine somebody who has worked for 35 years, he retires, and then all his paid is uh, 3 million naira, 4 million naira. Some of them are paid 80,000 naira a month. The income cannot take them. So if they find themselves in a political position, they are expecting benefit. When it does not come, so this stability will continue until the economy becomes better. But if, it were, if we were running a presidential system of government, it would have been better because it's the party that will win the election. The individual will not spend so much money. But right now, the individual wins election. We say, well, I spend all my money to win the governorship. And then the chairman of the party is expecting this. He's not able to give him that. 
a deadliest crisis. So those crises will continue so long as we are running presidential system of government and so long as the economy is down. That is just supposed to be the right way, you know. Like I said, in Britain, people donate to the party. And when the party wins, the, the chairman of the party, those who did the work, are the people they put in various uh, uh, positions. <laughs> Unlike in America, where the party brings out the candidate, is the candidate that does all the work. He wins, you know that this is the candidate that is contesting. In Nigeria, you know who is contesting. But if we are a, 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 a parliamentary system of government, you would not even know who the presidential candidate is. It's the party versus, party versus parties. Once the party wins, then they bring in their candidate. So we are hoping that as the economy improves, as people begin to understand that if you vote people uh, without really uh, uh, having trust that, oh, you must make your money back, you give the people a chance to rule you well. And then those who have won will rule the country well, and then the economy will develop. When it develops and there are income, of course, people will say, look, I can feed myself. All I want is good governance. But right now, it's not like that. Okay. People want to feed themselves okay. while also expecting good governance. Uh, Honorable Ogwene, thank you. Uh, as well, we're, we're back to the whole idea of the transactional nature of our politics. Uh, are, are we captive to this whole idea that uh, stomach infrastructure drives our politics and therefore political party management. Uh, Professor Ayede has very rightly uh, done attention to the fact that our political parties are more like SPVs, that's to say special purpose vehicles and that's why you see politicians hopping from one platform to the other looking for the most convenient vehicle that will take them to their destination. But uh, is it possible? Well, yes, we have described what the, the current practice is. but. Can, can we be normative and say, look, this is what ought to be. Are political party managers, uh, hostages as, as it were, uh, that they cannot break out of this whole mode of you know, seeking financial benefits, seeking advantage from an executive? And you know, the whole thing is all tied to, look, what, what do I put in my pocket? How do I survive from day to day? What else can be done? What else can be done by the party managers uh, to create a new narrative? Well, I, I, I just think that first we are, we, we are shifting the mirror away from the political parties, political party administration and management and the crisis thereof. And why I say that is that um, if you look at the current scenario that we have, the, most of the folks who run the political parties are not hungry people by any stretch of imagination. Uh, whether today or yesterday, you have had former ministers, former governors, who, by the nature of the process that threw them up in the first instance, it is the process that threw them up that is always throwing them out. Because the, 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 the owners of the party were not involved in the making of that leadership. They were, they were if you like, mo if not imposed, you know, craftily, you know, grafted into, into those political parties. So when, the, when they fall out of favor from the process that threw them up, they, they are elbowed out. And then it's so until we deepen the, the ownership of, of political parties. And let, let's not forget that. Just take the PDP that ran the country for 16 years. The PDP started what it called the People's Democratic Institute, Institute which was a, a, an institution where they began to train party managers and build those uh, structures that enabled you know, people who will run the political parties. But as soon as you know, these, these people that I'm talking about came, they killed that institu institute. They killed the process. There are no internal party processes that throw up candidates within the party. It is a, it is a, it is a, uh, it, it, the positions are shared. And when they are shared, there are different locations and, and, and godfathers in those locations who determine who take those positions. To the point where even cleaners in their party offices represent an interest. So until you are able to take away those issues from how political parties are run, then we will not be able to, whether abroad or here, uh, uh, Kisley, you do know that 
there are interests that play even in the American system that contribute money and they don't go back. They still stay there. The policies of government are directed by these lobbyists who put in their resources, whether it's on the issue of guns, uh, running of guns and the rest of them. So it is simplistic to say, oh, you know, it's until the economy. The economy has nothing to do with the attitude, the self-governing nature of the people, the institutions that we have vested the responsibility for leadership recruitment. If you cannot obey your own rules, if you make a law for yourself and you can't obey those rules, you are running primaries, you are running, um, 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 uh, uh, you are selecting candidates for, for positions, governorship as of rep, there is no distinct delegate list that those who are contesting that office can say, I have the list of those who are going to vote in these primaries. I have the list I can identify. INEC will be, in Anambra, for instance, now, INEC will be giving political parties the list of voters for the November 6th Anambra election. Few months to the election, INEC will give them the, the voters register. They can go through it. They raise objections. The political parties make those demands on INEC, but do not do so for themselves. So it has nothing to do with the economy. It has more to do with the determination to subvert processes and get dubious advantage. And so if, if we reduce it to income, transactional, uh, people who, who elect you, if you sell properties to go and contest election because you think that you are going to, you are going to, it, it becomes an investment. It becomes a hedge process for you. We, we need to divorce ourselves from that and say, look, if you get into government, you are going in for service. You have a role to play. Sometimes we exaggerate our own role. People get into the National Assembly. They are the ones going to go and buy uh, vehicles for supporters. They are going to, that is, uh, that is taking away yourself. It is not this, the people who are forcing you to do that because you have an interest to come back and because of the benefits that are in the position that you occupy, you now put more money to see whether you can come back. So we need to divorce this away from the attitude of the voters and how they relate with the people in government and face first and foremost the internal mechanisms <coughs> within the political parties and how they have refused all the political parties completely refuse to obey their own rules. If you are going to have a convention, who is qualified? Where is the members of those political parties who are qualified from the, from the world to the local government to the state? Those processes need to be clear. As we are speaking now, governors are intervening in the congresses. You know, people who win election democratically from those sub sub levels are being removed. Somebody will sit down. Somebody has won election at the ward. Somebody will sit down in his office as chief executive of the state. He will use Biro to cancel those who won the well, elections well, democratically. Well, as a, as a, well, thank you very much uh, for for your contribution. But I I, I don't see any major uh, disagreement between what you have. Uh, indicated and what Honorable Ogan has said. It's probably just a matter of accent uh, with regard to the economic factor in our transactional politics. But there is a key point that you have made and you have emphasized that and illustrated it in various ways, which has to do with one, either the stakeholder nature of our political parties or the ownership of our political parties. What we may wish to further interrogate could very well be one, how does the ownership come about? It is like saying land, you know, how do you become a property owner? So how does the ownership come about? How is the ownership sustained? How is the ownership displaced? It is there you, I believe, and from what we ask our guests, you then begin to see the economic factor. You are aware, as anyone, that yes, at the beginning, there might be a candidate who is leveraged by the present owners of the party say at the state level or at the national. When that individual gets leveraged, say he becomes a governor or he becomes a president, the next thing will be for that individual who is now governor or president to say, well, well I have to uh, detach myself or delink myself from the strings of the owners of the party so I begin to accumulate my own war chest, begin to build my own structures. Isn't that where the crisis also emanates from? Professor Remy, are you there in Ibadan? What are your thoughts on this? Thank you very much. I think you have hit the nail on the head. And uh, what, what it means is that uh, 
aside from the political party, there's always this talk about the structures uh, of individual politicians. So uh, the party is not really uh, the, the structure of the individual, but it's recognized by the constitution. And so you have to use your structure to override the party structure or uh, incorporate the party into your structure so you can uh, get what you want. But I, I would like to talk about uh, uh, what uh, Honorable Ogane uh, referred to when he was talking about uh, the, 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 the idea of the party list. Because the, the, the point I think uh, we should draw from that is really that uh, the way we use the first past the post system, uh, which make uh, the elections a, a zero-sum game, uh, is one of the reasons why it's, it's a do or die affair. Uh, it's not really about the, um, the presidential system. And, and I think that's why the OIS committee suggested that w we should introduce some form of proportional representation system uh, so that it can reduce the tension uh, uh, around uh, contestation during elections. So that we can have, a, for instance, if we have proportional representation, we have party list, uh, the significance or importance of the party as an organization might improve and uh, if they are determ determining who are those who are going to be in, in parliament because we are using the proportional representation system and that might help the consolidation of political parties. It does not necessarily require the uh, 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 movement from presidential system uh, to a parliamentary system. Uh, I, in terms of uh, these uh, so-called uh, party structures, I think that, that's actually the, it's very important for us to begin to rethink the relationship between uh, powerful forces, who, who people who have resources, because sometimes it is not necessarily those who are in government who hijack political parties. What is required is if you have real, a huge amount of uh, watches that you can bring to bear on the political parties, uh, you might determine what happens with the primaries. Uh, and the, 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 the point is, politicians also have to take responsibility. Uh, and that's the point that I think uh, Isaiah is making, that they like the way the political parties are run, where one, any an individual can come and hijack the process, and if he's successful, he becomes the, the kingpin. And uh, until another person rises to take over the process, uh, uh, the, the person can continue to run with it. It, it. It's something that is close to what happened in the motor parks, where there are really no rules. Uh, once a, a, a strong man comes around and is able to overwhelm whatever uh, people are on the ground, the person suddenly becomes the, 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 the park owner and the park manager. And, and that's the kind of uh, 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 value that currently underwrites the, the, the political party system. And that, it is that value that isn't why he's saying politicians have to rethink and, uh, uh, and change. Uh, and nobody's going to do that for them uh, because, again, it's costly even for those who are in politics. If you talk to a number of uh, uh, politicians, even those in, in, in the state houses of assembly, uh, they, they complain uh, seriously about how they invest in, in elections and then suddenly uh, a, a gubernatorial candidate who is, who is strong and is able, you know, uh, 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 and is able to determine what the outcome of uh, uh, party primaries can just overwrite what, what they have done and then uh, they, they are left with nothing than to negotiate with that uh, individual. Uh, if, there are cases where even the, uh, the, uh, those who contest elections at those lower level begins to complain that uh, they found out that the, the, the leaders of the party already have a list before the elections. Now they have spent money uh, buying forms to contest for the, the uh, elections in those uh, uh, local government and, and House of Assembly, only for them to find out later that uh, uh, the, it was just a waste of time. And then you see the, the governors promising that they will refund the, the, the money they paid buying the funds back to, to those uh, uh, contestants. So I, I think these are things that politicians have to decide uh, to change. Uh, Nobody is going to, to change that for them, and, and it's not just a matter of the, uh, the economy of the, of the country. Okay, thank you so much. Professor Osumbo, it all boils down to money politics, money playing a big role in politics in Nigeria, and um, people expecting payback, getting back what they spent. We've seen councillors who have come into office or local government chairman or house you know, with nothing. Within six months, they are flying high. So how do we rule out corruption in party politics management? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, you've emphasized what we are really discussing, political party management. 
we all know that the current situation is not the best. And I believe Kingsley has adequately described what is happening. And the discussions so far point to the fact that what is happening now is not satisfactory. There's a high turnover rate. And then Kingsley said, can we move this discussion to the normative level? Yes. How do we create a situation that eliminates some of these abuses that are seen, including the role of money in getting elected and uh, the importance of money to the political office holder, which is the question you've raised. I think the answer or part of the solution, because I've mentioned some before, would be to deepen the system of political party management, discussing at the normative level, as you suggested. How do you achieve that? Studies have revealed that there are three essential components and elements that you have to a political party needs to conform with in order to ensure good political party management. Because you can't have good performance on the part of elected officials if the platform is faulty. Mm. You can't put something on nothing. If you are to put good quality elected officers in power, they must emerge from a good political party system. And I believe that is why this discussion is important. The elements that are essential are one, internal democracy, the outreach, political party outreach, which includes how they select their candidates, how they train their members, and uh, Honorable Ezewan mentioned that uh, the uh, People's Democratic Institute was established for this very purpose, but it's not working. Uh, the other political parties have also, I know, be thinking of setting up similar institutes, they should work. The third element is transparency. If there's no transparency, oh, some of the abuses that we've been talking about arise due to lack of transparency and accountability in the system. So once the political party uh, conforms with the dictates of internal democracy so that those who are elected into positions are the outcome of free exercise of democratic power, of voting power by the members, they are the product of election by the members. There will be more stability. So there has to be internal democracy, both in the election of the party administrators or managers, and internal democracy in the emergence of political party candidates for elective offices. Then I mentioned the outreach. How do you select these candidates? How do they emerge? Is it just to the highest, I remember the Second Republic, one popular politician said the presidency of Nigeria is not for sale to the highest bidder. But we find that these days, political offices are more or less for sale to the highest bidder. How do you ensure that the political uh, uh, the ticket is not sold to the highest bidder, but given to the person who can best represent the interest uh, the, 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 the philosophy or understanding of the political party and ensure good governance. That is the ultimate that the political party, I believe, would want to ensure. It's not just getting into power. Getting into power and ensuring that you exercise that power properly for the benefit of the people who you have campaigned to and have promised to serve diligently and well. The other is transparency. Why are people so desperate to get into this position? It's because they believe they, can, they have benefits, things they can take. Nomination forms are sold to thousands of aspirants, and people begin to question, where is the money? And yet the same people complain, we don't have money to run the political parties. Where is the money that you collected from aspirants? <laughs> so these are some of the things because of lack of transparency and accountability. I, 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 can, I, can, um, I can dwell further on each of these points, but 
uh, it boils down to recognizing these three critical elements for good political party management or administration and adhering to these uh, principles. Will it rule out any corruption? Oh yes, if there is transparency, I just mentioned transparency. Mm. Once there is transparency and accountability, then it will go a long way to eliminate corruption. You know that whatever money you are co uh, collecting, you must account to it to the people. Looking at the political party now, I'm not looking at the elected government mm. official. That, that one is, is separate. If the, those who are the officials of the party know that they are accountable to the members, mm. they must organize national convention. The constitutions require that national conventions of political parties must be held at certain intervals. The Constitution requires that elections must be held at certain intervals. The Electoral Act requires that INEC must monitor so these congresses that you are organizing. If these are adhered to, then you will see less of the abuses that we are talking about. It's like the manual. If you want to succeed, if you buy a car and you want to enjoy that car for 20 years, you must follow the manual. If you want your democracy to operate properly as it is meant to be, you must follow the manual. The manual being the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and the constitution of the political parties themselves. Uh, all right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Osumbo, for uh, your insights and indeed uh, the other gentlemen. I'm quite, uh, of course, um, excited by the uh, three major principles you talked about, internal democracy, uh, political party outreach, which will incorporate uh, the training of members and selection of members, as well as uh, transparency. We might just add a fourth to that, uh, which is to say, how do you ensure that the political party itself is a going concern? even as a voluntary organization, as a going concern, how does it survive? Uh, how does it survive? Is it by surviving and going to uh, government coffers for sustenance or by rallying your members and then getting into... All right, you're welcome back and it's still Good Morning Nigeria, live on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. All our four guests are still with us. Professor uh, Remy Ayede of the University of Ibadan in our Ibadan Network Center. And uh, Ezewan Wango here in the studios, Professor Sereme Osumbo and uh, Honorable Ogane Ego. Honorable Ogane Ego, just before we went on the short break, we were listening to uh, Professor Osumbo, you know, now walk uh, the normative, that's to say the prescriptive, uh, behavior that we should find from party managers. Uh, I do know that there might just be a distinction now uh, between party managers and party owners following from the conceptualization by uh, uh, SM1 Wango. But let us, for the purpose of, of, purpose of, this, of this interaction, merge the owners and then the managers because the uh, activities and rules uh, or lack thereof, you know, are the things that result in the conflict and the kind of crisis that, that we are seeing around. What, what in your opinion, uh, can and should work uh, more efficiently for the administration of political parties with the knock-on effect that we will see in our democracy? Yeah, I think what we need to do is to give the parties the power that they deserve. As it is now, once the parties midwife the candidates and the candidate comes out, the candidate is stronger than the party. If you look at um, you know, what we started from 1999, the president of was responsible for the change of chairmanship, national chairman of their party. So many of them. It, once he doesn't like this, it removes. It happened during the time of uh, Jonathan also. And of course, in the present president, when they changed the uh, uh, Oshobole, you know, they said the world suspended him. So the world would not remove the chairman of party for the whole country. And before you know, the, 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 the elected people, the presidency, Anko, Oshobole fell into disfavor with them, and then they removed him. So what I'm saying is that a time should come, or we need to deepen the strength of the parties. Parties should be able to recall their candidate. After it's the party that brought the candidate out. If the party feels the candidate is not doing well, even if it's the president, the president is not doing well, parties will tell the president, we will recall you. You are not representing us well. The public are not happy with you. 
That way, we should institutionalize it, a process where the party itself can record their, their, their candidate, and then, of course, bring another candidate for, for election. When that happens, then there will be stability. Then those elected will know that the party is stronger than them. Because it's actually the party that brings up the candidate. And once you get here, you can't see them. If we're talking about National Assembly, for instance, if the rules in my constituency are not good, if health facilities are not good, the creation not good, you can't even talk to the minister. You may move a motion, but it's not there. But in a parliamentary system of government, the minister is sitting with you. So you can tell Mr. Minister, how come social money is budgeted for roads in my area? There are no good roads. How come you are not doing so, 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 so? So when the candidates, when the, the, the ministers and those executive uh, offices are with you in parliament, you can talk to them directly. The people can feel it. The people can, can, it's like the people are asking them, those ruling really, questions as to what they are doing. But right now, it's not here. President comes, presents his budget once a year, and goes out. You can't even ask him questions. And that's why I'm saying that the parliamentary is better for a country that is developing. But once the party, once the party makes those the elected to be accountable to them, once the party can call a candidate and say, sit down, the chairman of the party, everybody is here, tell us what you have done since you, you went in. Then the candidates will now know that the party should be protected and that they cannot, the party is higher than them. They should follow the party's you know, the, the, the manifesto of the party. But as it is, there's nothing. A man comes in as a governor, and then he can remove the state chairman of the party. When, when, whether, whether you say they are respecting the rules or not, that is what is happening right now. The rules are not being respected. The president can remove the chairman of his party even a hundred times. He can remove the ESCO. If the president of the country says, I want the entire ESCO removed, of course. You will find the process, they will be removed. So what you find out now is the party is not subservient to the elected people. Who should not be? It's the people that should have the power. Those who from the world to the local government, to the state, to the national that brought these people out. After when you, you are seeking an election, you go to, to beg your party people, please vote for me. And then they not canvass for you, you are there. Once you get to the, the national you are not accountable to them. So the instability in the parties is the fact that the parties become weakened. They don't have any power once the candidates are there. And the candidates are not made, or rather those elected, are not made to account for the party. There's no party constitution where you say, a quarter of the time, the party will call their, 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 their candidate, who's a president, or who's a senator, or who's a governor, or local government shower, come and account at the various level. And then there will be a public, the public can be there where questions are being asked. And then if you are not satisfied, you record the person. Mm. But that is not there right now. Mm. So this ability remains, and those elected become, behave like as if they are king, as if they are higher than everybody, because they probably have the resources. Okay. And with that, if you know, so I think that we, we need to amend the constitution of parties to make them stronger than those who are in position of power. Okay, thank you. Professor Ayade, you know, amending the constitution of parties, how can party members begin to demand for accountability from political office holders? I think that uh, we must not uh, uh, fail to reckon with how rules work. Um, it is one thing to have a constitutional amendment, it's another thing to get politicians to obey the rules of the, of, of, the, of the parties, because that's precisely what we are talking about. It is not as if there are no rules. What we are saying is that politicians don't obey those rules. How do you get politicians to obey the rules? That should be the cross of the matter. And that's why I made the point again that uh, sometimes uh, in analysis we ask, do we change the rooms or we change the players? Uh, what we are facing now is that we don't have the option of changing the players because the players are Nigerians, they are politicians, they are there. What we can do is to appeal to them to have a rethink and, and pay attention to the consequences of their actions. Uh, because you can amend the rules of the party a million times, you can even change from presidential to a parliamentary system. 
if politicians still think that they should not abide by rules, they will still not abide by that rule. So they should pay attention to the consequences of their action and recognize the fact that uh, there are certain values that support democratic deepening. These are values of moderation, of respect uh, for the rights of others, and more importantly, they should also know that you don't have to win all the time. And lastly, the parties must have uh, well-established grievance procedures so that when people are aggrieved, their grievances can be addressed within the political parties. And I think these are the areas where politicians have to look. In terms of the rules, rules cannot work no matter how good they are if people don't obey them. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Remy Ayede. Now back to uh, Ezenwa Wangu. Ezenwa, well, there's still a number of uh, issues on, on the plate. Uh, but m m more critically, you know, we keep saying, how, how do we achieve this whole idea of, shall we now say, relative independence of political party managers from the executive or the elected uh, members of the party uh, who now seek to either hijack the structures or overwhelm them. How do we ensure their relative independence? In answering this question, I'm sure you will recognize that there will be the element of transparency that uh, uh, Professor Osumbo earlier talked about. So if you are collecting tens of millions of naira, one for expression of interest, and then two for nomination. For How do you account for that money? And then uh, uh, when, you, when you are a political party manager, in whatever position at whatever level, must you be going cap in hand you know, to be hanging around with either the local government chairman or hanging around in His Excellency's office? The, uh, the political party hats men, um, they eat the same thing with the cattle. So the cattle, therefore, does not respect them. Once, the, 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 once you eat grass, that's why the herdsmen don't eat grass. They eat other things and allow the cattle to eat the grass. So what, what, am, I, what am I saying? You have a situation in which people don't pay party dues. If you have 3 million, 4 million members of a political party and they pay even if it is 100,000 Naira dues, the issue of accountability that Prof raised will become natural because it is my money, mm -hmm. my hundred naira that is running this political party. Well, it is deliberate that party cards are printed in hundreds and given to honorable to hold. So when you register, you go to honorable and collect the card. They collect the money for the card from the honorable. He pays for everybody. So I don't have a sense that I belong to. So it is deliberate that you don't want accountability. So if the parties can reinstate the issue of membership dues, that resources will now force them to be accountable. The second thing, and I, I'm, I'm happy I'm able to provoke Prof, uh, His Excellency to come up with those three points that, that he did. The, the, the bigger challenge for us will be how are the political parties trying to raise monies independently of, of the politicians, the, the, the managers themselves? They can organize trainings and people can pay for those trainings. They get resources from it. They can approach donor agencies who, if their, if their accounting processes are open and are transparent, will be willing to give them money to run so but the, the challenge is that we go cap in hand the politicians don't respect the party managers the the delegates are waiting the delegates in many states in many states candidates i mean aspirants pay as much as a million naira to delegates to emerge as candidates of their political party sometimes more than one million is paid to these delegates so people who have collected one million from you to elect you, you don't owe them anything. So it's a lack, it's absence of mutual respect because of conduct, because of the way. So we need to establish code of conduct, which the political parties do have, but which they are not respecting. So and they are not abiding by it. So if they are able to first and foremost get their members to pay dues, get alternative sources of income for the the parties, 
run these institutes that I'm talking about. Those institutes can become fee-paying places where people can pay money. But it has to do with laziness, indolence in terms of not even wanting to work. So the chairman, every, every, every time you go to a government house, you are going to see the party chairman, the, His Excellency will introduce her. This is my party. He's permanently in the government house. He does, not, he does not see himself as being able to extricate himself and can then play that role that uh, Honorable Ogene is talking about, which means giving directive. You give directive to somebody who, who, you, who respects you. If you have already put yourself in a place where I can no longer respect you, 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 I, you can't give me instruction. So we need to take away funding transparency like uh, his excellency mentioned is very key accountability accountability that is the ability to account for the money so even if it is nomination fees when you put it together who is accounting when you when the parties are having their convention the issue of audit comes last and is deliberate it is put last by the time they are going to audit. There is already rowdiness, so you are not going to hear who, who donated what, who put what. So it's, it's, it's a deliberate system of confusing the situation. And, and until you are able to streamline these things and make them realize that people understand these issues. I, I, so there is no problem receiving money for nominations and the rest of them. When you receive those monies, are you accountable for them? Can anybody say this is what this money was used for? So the person who gives you money knows you are not accountable for it and he does not want you to account because that disables you it puts you in a position of disability when he knows that you are no longer accountable and and for me that is the the, the huge challenge that we face <laughs> all right uh, Mr. The, uh, the, uh, the auditor's report as the last act <laughs> <laughs> that's what is done in the unions too actually <laughs> So, Ezra Wango, Chairman Partners for Electoral Reforms, thank you so much for your input and insight into this conversation this morning. You gave us some hilarious comments there and got us laughing. Thank you so much for coming. Professor Emmanuel Remy Aide, Professor of Political Institutions, Governance and Public Policy, Department of Political Science, University of Ibadan. Thank you so much for your contribution to the discourse. Honorable Ogene Ima Ogo, Member House of Representative representing Amuo Odofing Federal Constituency. He's a PDP. He was Publicity Secretary of National Republican Convention between 1990 and 1992, yes. among other political party 